week she ain't dead i don't care what evidence they bring up i did not see a crash car and i didn't see a body look she ain't dead y'all she ain't dead and i just be the one to say that i told y'all so i'm still rocking with effie because at the end of the day she did what she had to do to be on top she really did all this low-key so you could be Tariq's number one that's for him to low-key prove in this one episode that he's building your relationship off of not making the same mistakes that he made with lauren at the end of the day even though you think she's body to me that proves who Tariq's number one is I'm really trying to understand this because you're telling me in season two mecca was trying to win monet back take zeke and leave the country he he has a whole fiance here that he was supposed to be trying to put a ring on her finger. Diana, I mess with you, but why are you out here trying to act like you don't know why your mother's mad? She's out here trying to act like she doesn't know that what she revealed at the dinner table started a landslide that led to the events that caused Zeke getting bodied in the first place. And then we got Sama Masaleka over here trying to spit game using Bridgerton line. Real talk, y'all, this is my thing about Lorenzo. He is so pressed about Mecca like he's still alive. Dude is so pressed about Mecca like he's still his op walking around the streets like that hasn't already been handled really the man of the household like you claim to be why are you so worried about someone that's irrelevant in the conversation drew and kane didn't really do that much in this episode but what they did to me proved that lorenzo is right and that drew is the one that's gonna take the business kane is too ambitious and hot-headed that calm cool and collected energy is what the family the tahadas really need they really got brayden over here suited and booted like a musk jr a bezos jr a zuckerberg jr but look, I'm saying, Brayden, as long as you have your priorities in order, the office isn't looking that bad. Y'all remember that time in the OG Power when the guard wouldn't leave Ghost alone when he was locked up? Yeah, Tariq, you are your father's son. This dude, Tariq, tries so hard to prove that he's not like Ghost while simultaneously proving the point that he is his father's son. And Martin Stein Jr. over here was just being annoying the whole episode. Because why are you out here profiling Tariq? Like, look, that thug line was so unnecessary, and that's why what happened to you happened. What is really crazy to me is that Tariq is out here playing a big game. Like, he can move all of Mecca's product just because they have Tate in the polls and Method Man and Sax in the court. And I have a strange love for Sax just because he's an OG to the power universe, but this dude can't decide whose side he is on. Like, dude, your hands are already dirty. Why are you trying to clean them off now? Y'all, since the start of Ghost, we have not had a great track record with teachers. So already, she is on my body caught list. Can we really talk about this dude, Rashad? Because he had a whole shorty on his arm, but couldn't keep his eyes off the teacher. The audacity to spit riz at somebody while you're locked in arms with somebody else. I know this might be weird considering the circumstances, but I didn't expect Monet to be this upset. Like, I know Zeke is her son, but I didn't expect her to be this distraught. Like, I won out of the game distraught. This dude Kane stays. He stays on Effie. And you don't know that Sis has a whole other man. I'm not hating on Kane's persistence, and I'm going to be bold with it. I'm low-key liking Kane and Effie a lot more than Tariq and Effie. Going into this season, I might be backing this up. And I'm just here to say it again, to remind y'all, to let y'all know for some of you who don't know, Sis right here is the best character in the whole show. I don't even care.